In your course server administration, you have went through some of the videos that instructor have covered and um, demonstrated different type of installations and talked about uh, difference, differences in, in different type of features. But most of these videos are going to be good. But the if you want to become a real server admin, you have to then take another step. And that step is to open Windows Server 2022. Or if you're watching this video when the new server is out, then you have to watch and learn from the documentation that Microsoft provides. No videos can cover almost everything that server can offer. And of course, I'm not going to also recommend you spend extreme amount of time in tiny, many things that all of these features offer. But as a systems administrator, we heavily rely on Microsoft documentation Whenever we implement or deploy, or even if we have to plan something uh, concerning servers, and that cannot be done without the documentation because most of the time we work for a professional organization and they would want you to use everything under licensed or contract or if it's supported by Microsoft. So we cannot just go and start watching some of the videos and then start implementing things if you want to take this job serious and then of course you have to be that person to open documentation like this one just go to google type windows server 2022 documentation and uh, then click on run this server documentation and it takes you to this page windows server documentation and you will have to create the mindset of someone who can go through this document patiently going through some of the text doing things that it is asking and performing some of the actions on your lab systems or whatever you have in your uh, environment. So the key point over here is to create the mindset of reading things from internet, especially from official documentation. So when it says get started with this Windows Server, that was this is the first thing that you would want to do in the first chapters, is when you read the the, uh, the videos from instructor, watch the task, and maybe some try some of it in your lab environment, like the one that we have created, uh, you saw the last video you have created this, these systems by now. So then, of course, uh, you will kind of uh, try it on these systems. So get your mind ready for this type of learning or when, when basically you see something like Microsoft explaining their own operating system, Windows Server is a platform for building an infrastructure of connected application networks and web services from the work group to the data center it bridges on premises environment with azure you see this is something you probably would have seen this like 10 years ago or a few years ago but we weren't seeing with azure and now the servers the operating systems are uh, the they're making all these operating systems like a hybrid where you have you can use it on premises but you also have to connect it with online services such as Azure, Office 365, Exchange Online, and this is what the servers are coming right now. And that's why all of these skills are important. So when you get to this page, this is very important. So make sure you open the blog where you can watch the latest blogs from people. They are sharing things about different type of servers. And you would, if you want to become a server admin, you would want to be involved in this type of blogging understand what people are following or issues and things like that and and another thing is the community it's very important that you have bookmarked these links from here so make sure you open it you bookmark it then you go and you start exploring things especially the community one because this is where you can then ask questions from the people who are in this community so you can do a start a discussion see what other people are talking about uh, and all that sort of things you can talk about you see dhcp standby fedor which is september 23 this is done 2023 this is done just today so you see it's pretty active so you're going to come over here and actually get involved in this that's what i mean by learning from documentation is official documentation is if you want to become a uh, a professional a uh, more confident professional expert then you will have to get involved in this type of communities and documentation so next what you need to do is click on what's new in windows 2022 server or you can just actually click here on the left side and then start from 2016 go to 2019 and then 2022 this method of starting from 2016 is going to teach you a lot of things first it's going to teach you about how 2016 became a server where we started using a lot of 
compute, Hyper-V, nano server, all of these things got uh, started. And then in 2019, you're going to see some things probably got moved to more cloud and uh, things became more cloudish. And you will understand, okay, if you go to a company, if they're using 2016 servers, you know what have changed during past, uh, you know, few years. So if you go to 2019, you're going to see all of these new things came up and you don't have to go in extreme details about every single thing. Just go over the basics and just understand, okay, you know, what really changed the big major things. Then when you go to 2022, you're going to see, okay, oh, they they got rid of nano server. It's, it's called containers and things like that. There's a lot of Azure things going on, hot patching, stuff like that, you know. So you're going to definitely get understanding of how server evolved from one server to another, how it changed, how features changed, how things are working in companies now. So if you go to companies and they're using 2016, 19, and 22, that's very possible because a lot of people are still on 2012. They're moving away from 2012 now and getting to 2016 because of uh, how much Microsoft can support them. So you will see a mixture of servers in a company. It's not going to be just one solid platform in 2022 or 19 or 16. It's going to be very rare to find that type of company that does that. So if you want to take a step ahead, you can download a 2016 version, 2019 and 2022. If you really want to spend that time but if you have limited resources and you have done only 2022 server which we did in our lab you will just stick to 2022 and just learn a lot about 2022 and of course when you see something like 2016 19 then of course you will kind of put yourself more into that um and then of course you want to move down to the channels comparison things have changed what is azure edition so if you go to a company they're using this edition you're not going to be like totally clueless so by going all of this uh, information right here, it really teaches you a lot. Of course, when you come to this section where it says features removed or no longer developed, and then that's really good because you can actually be working in a company where 2016 is being used, but then you saw oh, all of a sudden there's no more support for some features. That's probably they have already removed it. So here on the bottom, you see there's concepts and install, upgrade, and migrate. And a lot of people will test your skills on installation upgrading servers and migrating servers. That's kind of like the most uh, common things you do in a company. You install a server, but then how do you install it? The licensing on what platform, VMware, Hyper-V, and a lot of things. How do you find an IP address? Things like that. You know, this is a part of your job. Then upgrading re requires, did you take a backup? Is it going to impact some of the data or applications? Is it going to really work on the new servers? Migrating as well. So you will see that in uh, the companies when you start working. So make sure you go over these concepts. So they will give you a good understanding of how things work. So this is how you're going to get started with the extended learning on your own from documentation, keeping in mind that I'm not going to get annoyed by watching the text and following text and then implementing something in my lab systems. If you have that sort of mindset, you have to tell yourself, that can't happen. No, it's not going to annoy you. Even if you are getting annoyed, you have to work with that. You have to prepare your mind so strong about documentation that that is your life right there. This is how we work in IT, and especially in a more advanced roles where you just can do guesswork or just get something from outside online where you have to download some tool and just make it like you know put it in on top of a very highly secure servers that's not going to happen you really work on this type of documentation to work something properly and microsoft will then of course provide support when you do things that way as well so that's how you learn from documentation in my next video we're gonna go over some of the basic stuff inside the server operating system since we're in the beginning chapters so we will learn about how to do some of the basic things or where can we find it, information, where can we find information about server, uh, things like that. We're just going to just go over the operating system uh, overall in, in the lab environment that we have created here. And we'll just kind of explore it and see if we can find some of these new features and test it and, you know, not going into too deep, but just to keep that first chapter. So you you go over this documentation while I cover some of the video stuff and then the combination will be really good for you uh, when you're learning everything all together from the course.